Hey guys, I'm continuing on with the Admiral 20B1 chassis. As you saw at the end of the previous segment, I've got this set working fairly well. And now I want to go back through and finish up the recapping and checking for auto tolerance resistors. Right now I'm working on the volume control, replacing some of the old paper caps, still have this one to go. And now I'm pausing to check some of the resistors. Now, I'd already spot checked a few early on just to kind of size up uh, how all well these resistors held up over time. Because usually you just kind of take a random sampling, and if they're all pretty good, eh, it's, it's a fair bet that the majority are going to be all right. But if you spot check uh, a bunch and they're all off, well, and the odds are pretty good that a lot of them are going to be off. Well, in this case, a lot of them are off. So, for example, this guy. 18 ohms, supposedly, no, not so much. How about 86? And uh, this guy over here should be 2.2K, kind of hiding back in there. Well, let's see. If I can get the stupid clips on there. And what do we got? Uh, about about 5.6. So <laughs> I've been seeing that more and more. That I'm going to be replacing a lot of these. However, as you saw at the end of the previous part, this that's actually working pretty well. It shows you that these tube circuits can usually tolerate a really wide variation in resistance. But I like to think that if I replace them with values that are a lot closer to what was specified, it'll work a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Because the owner of this set, he wants to use it he wants to watch this set on a regular basis so I want to uh, go through and do do a proper job so I don't get called back with the <laughs> report that the set isn't working right anymore so uh, yeah I'll probably spend more time on the resistors and the capacitors to be honest because there aren't a whole lot of caps left to do one two three four five six uh, I think that's it unless there are any under here but I don't think so And then once I get done with all that, I want to pop open these guys and uh, put some mic caps in there and then do an audio alignment because I do have really crappy sound, which is a very common issue with these Admiral sets. I removed the covers from the two sound IF coils because I wanted to verify what type of mic caps were in there. This one we can clearly see is 35, just a single. This one's not marked. And there's only a single one. I've worked on other sets that had one on both sides. However, that does match my schematic. There's a 35 and a single 30, so I'm sure that's what it is. There were numerous revisions of this. Some have two, some have one. So I think that was just a production change. All right, well, I do have some new mic caps on the way. I got some 30s and some 33s, which should be close up to 35. I'll just have to align that, which I was planning on doing anyway, so no big deal. Hopefully those parts will arrive soon. My order of parts from Allied Electronics has arrived, and I want to point out a couple things. I know a lot of restorers, including myself, from time to time, use these generic yellow caps. They seem to work fine. I know there's a lot of debate back and forth on the various forms of whether or not these are good. And there really don't seem to be any confirmed tales of these being bad. But, as an electrical engineer, I like to be able to read specs. I like to know what they're made out of what temperature range you're specified for, what the tolerance is, expected lifespan, and so on. So, I sometimes use these, which I've shown in other videos. Mallory uh, 150 series. I think Mallory's changed a few hands. I think they're currently on Bay Vichy. You can get these at Mauser. Really high quality caps. A little expensive. Well, here is another option. Illinois capacitor. Just coincidence, they're based out of Chicago, like myself. Well, Allied Electronics carries them, and I was surprised to see that 
0.047 microfarad 630 volt metalized polypropylene really nice caps only 38 cents each at least in, in large quantities so I ended up getting a hundred of them because I go through a lot of these but even at uh, quantities of 25 uh, not a whole lot more I think like 41 or 42 cents each so it's American company probably made in China but uh, you know, <laughs> at least the headquarters are based in, uh, in America so it's just uh, another option now something else at Allied Electronics is, if you go to their homepage, you'll see a link for overstocked items. I always check that out before I place my order, because sometimes they have some really good deals in there. Generally 50% or more off, like these 3000 ohm 5 watt resistors. Nice vitreous enamel, way better than that original sand-coated crappy resistor that was in here. So the one I got in here is, is really overkill. You can see how big it is. That was just temporary, temporary until these showed up. So that's what I'll be putting in here. So these were an overstock item, so I got a nice, nice discount on them. And quite often what they call overstocked items, when you look at the quantity they have on hand, it's actually like 50 or less. I think it's more items that aren't moving rather than items that are really overstocked. So while I was at it, I got a whole bunch of caps and overstocked items and more uh, Illinois capacitors and different values, so I should be set for quite a while for upcoming projects. I certainly have all the parts I need now to finish this set off. Here are the new mic caps. I just used my little flush cutters and nipped away at the old mica wafers in there. Cleaned up the posts and then wrapped leads around with Mic caps and solder them in place. Now, no doubt that will require an alignment now, especially next. The original was a 35 and that's a 33, and I suspect the tolerance on those exposed mica type caps is pretty wide, anyways. But there should be plenty of tuning range in the slug, it shouldn't be any problem to get things back into alignment. I've worked my way over to the upper right corner now and popped the cover off the video IF portion for a look inside. And I've been checking the resistors and what do you expect I've been finding? Well, there's a 1K brown, black, red. Oh, what do I get on the meter? 3.3K. So it's way, way high. So that'll get replaced. Others haven't been too bad though. 1.15 This guy. Yeah, 1.5, yeah, it's, it's pretty far off. Does it all be 1000 or 1k? So I've got more work to do in here. And uh, in here. I still. I have not figured out if these caps that are not paper, if these are the originals or not. I'm inclined to think they are, but I don't recall seeing those on an Admiral before. But maybe this is just slightly newer than the sets I'm used to working on. Like there's one tucked back in here, and the joints just look too neat and too original for all these to be replacements. So maybe they just switched from the paper caps to the plastic coated. No, there's still paper inside. It's just the outer shell that's plastic inside. They're exactly the same type of leaky paper and foil construction. I've pretty much finished replacing all the capacitors and out-of-spec resistors, so doing another power-up test. That includes the mica caps in here, remember? So I... Actually, I'm surprised that there's sound. I would have thought there'd be no sound because without having, because I haven't realigned it yet. Alright, cool. That goes a little touchy there. Alright, so I didn't screw anything up. It's good. <laughs> Still a nice sharp picture. And.
sound is definitely louder now. Quality's not so great, but it's louder. And I thought there would be no sound at all because I uh, I replaced the caps in here and haven't realigned it, and the values I'm used I use I'm sure don't match the originals. But I guess it's close enough. Some sound is getting through. So I will go through and do a proper alignment, but now I'm just going to try doing a little bit by ear. So we've got a core at the top and bottom of this and top and bottom of this. Top and bottom of this first and second. Um, audio IF and into this. Uh, the bottom here is another IF stage and then the one at the top is a ratio detector. So I'm going to start with the one closest to the output here. Just do it by ear. So about where it was was the best. And uh, try this guy out. Then why did you just switch the car? Now so I'm guessing the cap that I replaced was probably across the ratio detector winding, not the primary, because it had no effect. Well, this one definitely got a little better. And about the there. Is up with that so actually, we're all about right where they were. That's, that's surprising. Well, finally, the ratio detector. Which is the actual the sound pick off the trap, which I think is this guy. It sure doesn't have that much of an impact. Alright, well. I spelled mobile, you're wrong on my botany test. So it's incredibly louder. <laughs> So the volume is definitely way, way, way higher than it used to be, but the quality is kind of crappy. I'm sure a proper alignment and getting the S-curve and all that right will uh, improve that. Now, as far as this goes, linearity is still a bit screwed up. Got better height now. So uh, I have not touched any of the electrolytics yet. Uh, I'm sure adjusting or replacing the bypass on the vertical output tube will help the linearity, although I got a bit of control now adjusting the linearity and this is height. Uh, where is it? This is height. So I guess it's not too bad as it is actually. So this thing, yes, yeah, it's, it's working better and better. It's, it's fantastic. Um, next up, I want to tackle the electrolytics. Got, well, I'll flip the chassis down and show you where they're at. Alright, so there's one little itty bitty guy here. Full microfarad 50 volt. That's the ratio detector. Normally these would be underneath the chassis. I don't know why they use this little baby uh, chassis mount. Guy, I'm just going to mount a new one underneath the chassis. That's what I typically do on all these sets. Just a single capacitor in there. It's really not worth restuffing. Another one hiding down in here. A little short guy. Kind of a pain to get at because it's uh, got a lot of stuff around it. And then there's one over here. This would be the uh, the filter for the vertical circuitry. This one's pretty easy to get at. What I think I'll do is leave these mounted on the chassis, if at all possible, cut them open up here, mount the new caps in and put the top back down. Maybe wrap some aluminum tape around it. It's a pretty uh, efficient way to do it. And then, of course, on the main power supply here. It's a dual 40 microfarad. That's your main Pi filter going with the 5U4. 
and then this guy is a combination filter for the low B plus 6x5 rectifier and a uh, cap for the uh, push pull output I believe again I'll probably uh, cut these guys while they're mounted on the chassis and restuff them from the top and then do an alignment and I think that will be it this was a relatively straightforward project I'm happy to say next up I want to tackle the electrolytics on the power supply now I was gonna cut these open oh maybe three-eighths of an inch from the base and clean out the insides, drill some holes down, mount the new caps, put this back over, maybe put some aluminum tape around it. However, when I looked underneath, it's just too easy to mount them underneath, the way they have this laid out. So, for example, down here, two-section cap. One lead is going right over to this big lug here in a power resistor. So, there we go. I attach one lead of the capacitor here, other one to ground, got a lug right there. Other side, we got one going over here to the filter choke, other one going to the rectifier tube. So, we just take this wire here from the filter choke and run it over here because we don't want to leave these capacitors connected in here in case they're leaky or short or anything. Anyways, and then we run new capacitor, one lead to this terminal, other one right here, the ground. So, one securely mounted here, one over here. With this cap, again, two sections. One side, going right over to this lug. I actually added this terminal strip. This um, hand ohm resistor was bad. I tried to pry this open and thinking maybe I could uh, uh, somehow mount uh, the resistors up here. I just gave up. And there was already a hole in the chassis here anyway, so I just mounted a terminal strip. Didn't have a 1500 ohm re resistor on hand, so I put two 3K in parallel. So anyways, I got a lug right here. Oh, bam. Attach one side of the new cab there. Other side to ground right there other side going over to this lug so mount the new cap one lug here other one over to ground and I just have to run these two wires over here or, uh, or rather that one's already going over here I mean uh, run this single wire from here it's not uh, okay so actually no I got two choices I didn't realize that this one has three wires so it's going both to this lug and to this lug so I can mount my new cap over here or over here this guy, single wire, going over to this tube, so one end of the cap here, other one down here to this lug around the base for ground. Take this wire out entirely. Piece of cake. Here's how I mounted two of the electrolytics. This guy right to the base of the rectifier tube, nice and solid. And this guy off the terminal strip. It's a little loose here because I haven't soldered this lug yet because I decided to take out those two 3K resistors I had. Uh, not that they wouldn't work, but when I placed my order with Allied Electronics, I got uh, a 1.5K, 6.5 watt resistor. So I got a little bit more overhead with the wattage, and uh, it'll give me a little more room under the chassis, let things breathe a little bit. Uh, something else I wanted to point out, get on my soapbox again a little bit, is here is the typical cheapo power resistor you get. The It's a ceramic core resistance wire wound around it. It's put inside of a ceramic body then filled in with, well, basically cement. They work okay, but what I wanted to point out was how flimsy these leads are. A really thin gauge wire. And this is a 15 watt resistor. You could have some serious current going through here. That should be much thicker. Check this out. It's only six and a half watt. Dale, quality company. Look how thick that wire is. Really heavy gauge stuff. Plenty of current handling capability, but also when you mount it, it gives a lot of stability to the parts. So it doesn't flop around so much. Whereas this, because these are kind of heavy, and with these flimsy leads, I mean, they just the part will just kind of flop around. So, more food for thought. I finished recapping the lower chassis. Will it make any difference? I suspect not a whole lot of difference, but perhaps the sound will be a little clearer. 
Something else I also want to check for is to see if there is any flash over in 5U4. I've had this problem with some other Admiral sets. I'm thinking maybe the new caps have a much lower impedance when you turn it on. There's more of a surge current and you get a little flash over, sometimes a little sparking inside the 5U4. So I've had to add a little resistance in the B plus circuit to provide a softer start. So I'm going to turn the lights off so I can check that 5U4. And here it goes. Set this on now. Uh, no, I don't think so. Turned it off again. No, back on. No, looked okay. <laughs> My uh, other Admiral I restored and showed in a video recently, I was tweaking the sound, it's the same thing, we turn it on, it makes that crazy sound as the horizontal slowly comes into whack, and then locks in. Yeah, I think this sounds a little bit clearer, still not perfect though. Well, this picture tube is fantastic. The owner of the set's really lucky to get such a strong 12 LP4. They're kind of hard to come by these days. Harder to find than the 10 inch counterpart. I've been trying to fix the linearity issue just by manipulating the controls and I've ended up with a situation I don't think I've ever seen before where it's crushed at both the bottom and the top. So the result is they have very elongated torsos, short legs and kind of crushed heads. Kind of like a funhouse mirror. Okay, got this well, three suction one for lytic taken care of. And one new cap here that is the cathode bypass and work output tube. Mounted it right to the tube socket, very convenient. Another section up here is actually an unused terminal on the terminal strip, so I mount it right there. And here is the third one. And I've replaced the cap and some of the out of spec components on the ratio detector there. Used a nice Sprague Atom cap, which leaves one electrolytic, that guy. Got a lot of wires, a lot of connections going to that, very busy. So that one, I am going to attempt to cut open from the top and drill holes down through. It's just, got like what, three wires and a resistor going there, a couple parts and a wire going there, several wires going there. It's just no easy way to mount the caps down there. But before I get to that, I want to do another power up because I want to see A, did this take care of my vertical height linearity issues? And B, did that help with the audio issues? Oh, and I also sprayed the controls with deoxit. They were kind of stiff and grungy before. Now they all move nicely. Alright, must have changed the channels while I was working on this set. Easy play, just about to get underway. 
I cleaned all the controls so everything's really out of whack now, I'm sure. Sound is a little cleaner, but still, still not quite perfect. Try tweaking it by ear again. Anyone care to volunteer? Who's going to put a noose around his own neck? Be serious, Peter. Our lives and reputations are at stake. Of course they are. Therefore, the rule is to find us as a scapegoat. One man can betray us. Save that for the alignment. All right. So back to this. So, let's see about that. Height. Yeah, that's looking better. I'll need a pattern generator to get it uh, perfect, but uh, even as it is, it talks a lot better. Uh, let's see. Plug in my VA62 and get a cross hatch up there. Scratch that because my crash edge isn't working right on that generator. I will use my uh, leader LCG 400. I can find my BNC adapter. Could have been looking for that for a while. I left the adapter attached to the end of my cable. Obviously things are off a bit. So this is linear. This is height. Hmm, it's still screwy. We got it's wider in the middle, but crushed at the top and the bottom. So I think next uh, I'm gonna try swapping out the tube. A little bit of flagging up here too, or rather the uh, horizontal sink's not so good. Okay, now it's better. I'm just in the horizontal hold. I have the horizontal hold all the way to the far right. And it looks better at the top, but uh, really, it should look as good when the horizontal holds in the middle of its range. So there is a coil on the back of the set I can adjust to take care of that. But hmm, boy, that linearity is messed up. Horizontal linearity—it's pretty good though. Pretty good. Um, I got to center things a little bit. Should be up a little bit higher to the right. And there's also a width control on the back. But first, I'll do the linearity. So that's a six K six. Uh, I'm just going to swap it out with one of the 6K6s on the amplifier. Hmm. 
Looks like we still have too much gain in the middle. So linearity at one extreme, the top gets really crushed. And the other extreme, the bottom gets crushed and the top's really stretched out. Now, there should be a point in the middle where everything's happy, but I can't quite get there. Now this set has a mask on it, so the top and the bottom get cropped off, so you just wouldn't be full height. So that's about how it should be. Hmm. I've tried several different 6K6s and several different 6SN7 vertical oscillator tubes, and none of it has made any difference whatsoever. So I'm going to sleep on this problem. And hopefully uh, I'll come up with something, or maybe one of you guys, as a suggestion. And uh, tomorrow I will also pick up with doing the alignment on the sound. So here's another look at that vertical circuit. One other really remote possibility is something up with the yoke. Those 560 ohm resistors I'm sure have drifted off value, but those are really there too. Uh, I think suppress any oscillations that might be in those coils rather than affect the linearity, but it's something that could be checked. A little hard to get at the yoke, you gotta take off this focus coil and then pop the cover off of this and there's two resistors buried down inside there. So save that as a last resort. Alright, so I'll pick up tomorrow.